all within the last two hours. A battle between the fired FBI director James Comey and the president, where both sides are not just fighting, they are fighting dirty. I mean, dirty. Donald Trump didn't seem to care much about Russian election meddling, but cared a lot about Russian prostitutes and that other thing. This is the stunning contention of James Comey, who we are hearing from out loud for the very first time this morning. Stunning for what he says, but more so for how he chooses to say it. Listen to how he answers questions about the unverified, salacious intelligence he discussed with Donald Trump back in 2016, that the Russians allegedly had videotapes of Russian prostitutes with Donald Trump urinating on each other. This was on ABC a short time ago. I said to him, sir, when he started talking about it, I may order you to investigate that. I said, sir, that's up to you, but you'd want to be careful about that because it might create a narrative that we're investigating you personally. And second, it's very difficult to prove something didn't happen. Did you believe his denial? Honestly, never thought these words would come out of my mouth, but I don't know whether the, the current president of the United States was with prostitutes peeing on each other in Moscow in 2013. It's possible, but I don't know. Think of all the other ways Mr. Comey might have answered that question. That is what the president might be thinking this morning as he unleashes with his response, calling Comey a leaker and a liar, weak, and then this, an untruthful slime ball. Much more on that in just a moment. First, though, CNN's Evan Perez joins me right now. We are hearing again from James Comey for the very first time, and I think the, the bile with which he is presenting this is extraordinary, Evan. John, I, I swear I never expected that we'd be going there, at least not like this, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, this book is called uh, A Higher Loyalty, Truth, Lies, and Leadership. It's going to drop in about three or four days now, and, but pieces of it have started leaking out in news accounts, and you get the portrait of, of uh, the disdain, really, with that, this, that the former FBI director holds uh, the President of the United States. And we set the, set the scene, I guess, to early January 2017. President Trump is about to take office, and his intelligence team comes to brief him on the threats, including the Russian threat, uh, and what has just occurred, the interference in the 2016 election. And then James Comey pulls him aside to brief him on the now infamous Russian dossier. And here's how Comey describes that interaction. Take a look. I started to tell him about the allegation was that he had been involved with prostitutes in a hotel in Moscow in 2013 during a visit for the Miss Universe pageant and that the Russians had uh, filmed the episode and he interrupted very defensively and started talking about it, you know, do I look like a guy who needs hookers and I assumed he was asking that rhetorically, I didn't answer that and I just moved on and, and explained, sir, I'm not saying that we credit this, I'm not saying we believe it, we just thought it very important that you know. Did you tell him you thought it wasn't true or you didn't know if it was true or not? I never said I don't believe it because I, I couldn't say one way or another. How weird was that briefing? Really weird. I, it was almost an out-of-body experience for me. I was floating above myself, looking down, saying, you're sitting here briefing the incoming president of the United States about prostitutes in Moscow. And John, uh, the, that interaction changed everything for James Comey. They had a multiple additional interactions, uh, more, many more than Comey says he ever really wanted with the President of the United States, one-on-one -on -one interactions, and obviously the relationship soured thereafter. Um, look, we, we spent some time back in 2016 looking into these allegations. I was in Europe uh, trying to follow up on whether or not these things had occurred, but we could never figure out, we could never, we could never get there, and so these allegations sort of stayed uh, under wraps until that day that Comey decided to brief uh, the incoming president about the, uh, the, the salacious parts of this, uh, this dossier, along with other uh, parts of it uh, that alleged the Russians had compromising information on him. Look, there's also parts of this book as well, as he talks about the, uh, the Hillary Clinton email investigations and acknowledges, uh, according to uh, people who've read the book and uh, news accounts of the book, he acknowledges that perhaps there are things that he could have done differently, although he still sticks by that July news conference uh, in, 20, in 2016. Uh, look, I think this, uh, this is open warfare now between the former FBI director and the President of the United States. And I think when this book uh, finally rolls out on, uh, on Tuesday, uh, James Comey has a hot seller on his hands. 
Evan Perez for us in Washington. Evan, thank you so much. Now, we had been told that the White House itself and the president were not going to respond directly to this. They were going to leave that to the RNC. That is not what has happened. The president is in this and in this big now. Abby Phillip at the White House for us. Abby. That's exactly right, John. The White House was supposed to be leaving this to the RNC, but President Trump re unearthing some of his anger and frustration at James Comey this morning in a series of tweets. Uh, this is really personal, John. Here's what the president wrote. James Comey is a proven leaker and liar. Virtually everyone in Washington thought he should be fired for the terrible job he did until he was, in fact, fired. He leaked classified information for which he should be prosecuted. He lied to Congress under oath. He is a weak and untruthful slave. Lime ball, who was at at time as time has proven a terrible director of the FBI. His handling of the crooked Hillary case and the events surrounding it will go down as one of the worst botched jobs in of history. It was my great honor to fire James Comey. Now, President Trump uh, is being attacked not just uh, on the issue of whether he is a liar or telling the truth or whether or not uh, he cared about Russian interference, but also in personal terms. Comey talks about his physical appearance, and that's something that you know we talked to uh, Kellyanne Conway, uh, the president's counselor this morning about uh, she criticized Comey for going personal both on the president's appearance and on his marriage and he, she was asked whether or not the president viewed this book as a betrayal here's Comey has a revisionist view of history and seems like a disgruntled ex-employee after all he was fired it's not as if he came to the conclusions that are in his book while he was on the job as FBI director in the presence in the company of the president and said you know I just must resign I can't deal with this anymore I must resign well, Kellyanne also added that uh, she was uh, that the, she talked to the president about this interview and that he was amazed that people like Comey can get away with saying things like this in books. Now, this is not the first book that has uh, really characterized the president in such harsh terms. Uh, this is a White House that is trying to deal with a lot of incoming here, but the president is not leaving it to his aides. Uh, he is taking Comey on, and this weekend is, is not nearly over. Comey still has a lengthy interview that's going to be aired. The book hasn't even been released yet. And the president uh, is, plans to be here in Washington all weekend, even though there's all this other stuff going on with Syria. He's taking the time out uh, to really fire back at someone who uh, has been a, a kind of thorn in his side. And in some ways, giving this book even more of a public a publicity push in the days leading up to its public release, John. Abby Phillip for us at the White House. The level of vitriol from both sides, extraordinary what we are seeing this morning. Joining me now, CNN law enforcement analyst, former FBI supervisory special agent Josh Campbell, and CNN political analyst Alex Burns and Molly Ball. First, Molly, just big picture here. What have we seen over the last two hours? Is there any way to describe it other than basically just total war? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think it is not too surprising that the president couldn't resist stepping into the fray here, despite all the people around him who have told him to, to rise above. That is not his M.O., and it never has been. Uh, using Creating a new epithet, you know, the RNC had tried to make Lion Comey a thing, uh, and the president taking that a step further with weekend untruthful slime ball. Again, mm -hmm. he's a, a master of vivid language, you might say. But it's, but the, uh, what he's trying to do here is clear. He's trying to create exactly the narrative that we're talking about, that this is a personal uh, fight between two guys who hate each other, because that takes attention away from the merits of Comey's argument and from the substantive claims that Comey is making about the things that he says the president doesn't understand about the legal system, about the things he says the president has done wrong. If the president can turn this instead into a boxing match, uh, that's what the focus is. Let me play a little bit more sound from James Comey. Again, this is the very first time we've heard from him out loud uh, about what is in this new book. Let's listen. I'm about to meet with a person who doesn't know me. He's just been elected president of the United States by all accounts and from my watching him during the campaign could be volatile. And I'm about to talk to him about allegations that he was involved with prostitutes in Moscow and that the Russians taped it and have leverage over him. Was there any choice there? Uh, why, if this was salacious, and this particular part of the dossier unverified, still unverified, by the way? Yes. So far as when I got fired, it was unverified. Did you tell him that the Steele dossier had been financed by his political opponents? No. 
I didn't, I didn't even think I used the term steel dossier. I just talked about additional material. Did, but did he have a right to know that? That had been financed by his political opponents? I, I don't know the answer to that. It, I, it wasn't necessary for my goal, which was to alert him that we had this information. How graphic did you get? I think as graphic as I needed to be. All right, Josh Campbell here with us also. Molly made a really interesting point. What the, pre what the president is trying to do now is create a fight between two men instead of focusing on the substantive points that James Comey was making. What are, in your mind, the substantive points that James Comey is making here? Why is he saying the things he's saying? Well, I think it's twofold. I mean, the first is that you're seeing someone finally being able to respond who himself was the victim of a character assassination for a long time. And if you think about it, I mean, you s simply have two different views here, two different styles. Uh, there are a lot of differences between uh, Jim Comey and the president, a, a lot. Uh, one of them is how they choose to present themselves. I think if you take all the tweets that we've seen, I mean, you could probably fill many books. I think Jim Comey took a different tact and said, I'm going to sit down and write a thoughtful piece that will walk the American people through to the, the decisions I make. Made, and he's bringing that insight. And it's also his opportunity, as we would all expect, when someone is, you know, lobbying, um, you know, untruths at us to be able to come and say, this is my side of the story, and then leave it up to the American people to decide who they believe. So Alex Burns, Josh says it's a thoughtful piece from James Comey. Now, look, one thing is clear. James Comey writes very nicely uh, in, in vivid, florid detail at times. But to be thoughtful, does he need to bring up things like the fact the president was shorter than he thought he might be. The president had smaller hands than he thought. He had white circles under his eyes as if he were in a tanning bed here. It seems as if the former FBI director, the former deputy attorney general of the United States is going out of his way to poke and prod. Look, he certainly doesn't need to do that any more than he needs to uh, sort of reiterate the allegations in the Steele dossier about what might have happened in a Moscow hotel room in response to a question that already laid out mm -hmm. uh, the details of, of what is alleged to have happened. He does it for whatever reason he personally finds that uh, to be useful or satisfying or, uh, you know, as a writer, I guess you, you want to potentially give the benefit of the doubt that if it's useful to telling the story, if he thinks that it, it sort of brings the reader into that moment in the Oval Office or wherever else he was meeting with the president and, and sort of, you know, conjures the strange sensations that he as a clearly very buttoned up man might have had meeting with this very unusual uh, new president, unusual by conventional standards. But, you know, having said all of that, clearly he is not shying away from poking the president. Clearly he is not shying away from injecting stuff uh, very prominently into the mainstream political debate that a lot of folks have stayed away from up to this point. 